Australia. I remember when Paul and Owen Kelly yeah. had spent about a month here, mm-hmm. and that month will go down in infamy as far as the stories and the, and then the, uh, the I think the um, I don't know the industry is still talking about that month that Paul was here, and so then I had questions about that week in Australia. So Paul, he said that Crusher set you guys up. What do you remember about when Crusher came to you and asked you to? To, to help Dell Jr. out. How much did you even know of Dell? And, and had you guys, uh, you know, what was that first meeting like? Uh, yeah, we all, we all knew he was coming, obviously. And um, we know who Dale, Dale is, for sure we do. But And then uh, I think we first met at maybe Phillip Island. You guys come to Phillip Island and and Topher and JD probably walked into to my garage and then started talking to those guys first. And then... Um, then when they're up on the Gold Coast, this is a, a true story. We get a phone call. They're like, hey, we're up on the Gold Coast. I said, oh, that's, that's good where you're at. And they go, oh, we're at Hooters. <laughs> I'm, Why the hell would these guys come all the way from America and go to Hooters? Hooters, we've got to rescue these guys and show them around. So <laughs> we went down to Hooters. Um, said, we've got to get you out of this place. And, and uh, that's when we thought we had to become proper tour guides and show these guys what Australia was all about. And so where was the first place you took him to show him what Australia is all about? Uh, to the track. I think we were sitting there talking and he said, oh, I need to drive something. And I'm like, okay, I can fix that. Let's go. Let's get that one done. <laughs> and then, uh, then we just kept hitting all the things we wanted to do on the list, which um, we had a good time. Yeah. We had a good time and it. The thing I remember is no one knew who Dale was. You know, he got thrown out of his first night. He had all sorts of good things happen. Oh, really? <laughs> what, what was this? I guess we got thrown out of the nightclub. Uh, the, I don't know how that happened. I just remember. I know that. Um, I think Paul might be the reason why we got thrown out. Of the nightclub. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely my fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do we, you remember this? Oh, I remember it. I yeah, mean, I would assume yeah. that that wasn't the first or the last nightclub you've been thrown out of. So, what was the what was the situation this kind this time? I don't know what happened, but we got him back in. It was fine. <laughs> oh, we got him back in. <laughs> He's being tight lipped. <laughs> we um, I you know being a big fan of the supercars and and going all the way over there to be able to go to a race. That was the whole. Uh, yeah. The objective really was to see the supercars race, and it was our in the winter time. It's their summer. Uh, they're in the middle of their racing season. We went to Phillip Island, beautiful. Uh, part of the country, uh, really amazing racetrack. The hospitality uh, it was first class. Not, I mean, they treated me really well, but they treated all of uh, the people that was with us, all my buddies, incredibly well. No, we 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 basically felt like um, you know the best guests. And uh, Paul and his team, I hardly knew any of those folks, but um, I knew of Paul because I'd watched the series a lot. Um, they call him the dude. That sounds like sound, must be a good guy. They call him. They got a great nickname. That's and, right. Um, so we ended up uh, hanging out, watched the Utes race. I didn't know what a Ute was. A Ute, Mike. Oh, yeah. um, we, we, we've talked about this on the show here. Yeah, and, how and they should bring him over here. It yes. was with Will Power, actually. Remember? Well, actually, um, no. We remember we were doing a show. This is funny, Paul. We were doing a show at Daytona. For uh, this February, oh, yeah. and I was sitting down with the with with the General Motors, uh, yeah, uh, of North. Jim, it was Jim Campbell, yeah, Jim Campbell with Chevrolet, and yeah. I said, "Hey, you guys ought to bring the Ute over here." And he's like, <laughs> "He's like, yeah, you know, we've kind of talked about that, and it'd be cool, and I'll you know kind of brushed it off." And then we like two days later, they we found out that they'd closed Holden down. <laughs> that Chevrolet is going to end the Holden, um, which yeah. is which is really unfortunate. Such an incredible. Uh, uh, iconic car. I don't know how you guys feel about it over in Australia, but I love the Holden um, and have a Commodore myself. But uh, that was that was a funny sort of twenty four hour span there. But the, I I got to see the Utes race. We had a great time at Phillip Island, and he's right. Um, we were standing at this era, we were staying at a uh, casino in the Gold Coast, and. Right down the street was Hooters, and we were we didn't we just this is like the first lunch. We're like, man, we're hungry. What y'all want? Let's just go to Hooters, okay? Let's see what Hooters is like at, at, in Australia. So we go, and and it was empty, nobody in there, and uh, there, my buddies are on the phone with Paul, and 
He's like, y'all got to get out of there, man. We're coming, to, <laughs> we're coming to get you, man. Why are you in there? Your first cue is that nobody else is in there. That yeah. should have been it. That should have been the sign. So we hung out with <laughs> we we hung out with Paul for a couple uh, days there, uh, and he's like, "Hey guys," um, he turned us loose one day, and he told us he said, "He said I'm gonna come pick you up, pick y'all up tomorrow in a helicopter, and I was, and take you to the we're going to the winery for lunch." And so we walk into, uh, he's telling me, he's telling us this, and I'm like, oh, man, all right, how are we going to get to this? Uh, we're going to drive this helicopter. I don't know where we can, uh, i got to figure out you know, where we're going to go to get to the landing pad. He, we walk into the front door of the casino as Paul's kind of dropping us off. Uh, and he says, he turns and says to the bellman, he goes, hey, I'm going to land my helicopter on that uh, parking deck out there. And the, the casino had like a, two three level parking deck and the guy looks at him and he's like you understand what i'm saying i'm gonna hand, i'm gonna land my helicopter on this parking deck tomorrow morning <laughs> and the guy's like yes sir and i said yeah well we need permission from the person that controls the building and he gave it to us so yeah as far as i'm concerned we were good to go and he did <laughs> we come out there the next morning helicopters on the pad uh i mean the hotel security's out there like how you doing mr morris <laughs> Yes, sir. This is good. You know, they're kind of standing, standing guard, making sure no cars are driving up on this helicopter, right? Um, by the time he comes to land the helicopter, the whole casino was like creating, uh, <laughs> going, going to the best efforts to accommodate Paul. Is He's this like, your life? Is this the way you live, Paul? Everybody <laughs> just accommodate you? I told him there was a very important guest staying at the hotel that needed to have a. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny that's one of the things that i learned about uh australians at least paul uh and uh, is their their wit oh yeah they will they will they will embellish a, a a little bit and get a get a joke out of it and also uh trick the casino so <laughs> trick the casino <laughs> um we so paul flies us to his family uh owns a winery tell me about that because i'm I, i'm not a wine drinker paul and uh still i'm not no. i'm not today i'll drink your wine okay and uh so we go to the, have lunch at this place and we all got <laughs> on on wine and i'm like man this is great stuff so that's really the only thing i'll drink you'll send me some every once in a while but how did your family get into that get in the wine business uh it was always a passion of my dad's and after he became successful in life. It was something he wanted to do and build. And I think he's it's about 20 years that that winery's been there now. It's, it's, so it was uh, relatively pretty, new when we were there. Yeah, it was, what, two, three years old? Wow. Uh, 97, a bit longer, 10 years old, maybe, Dale. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a place where people can come and have fun. And also we have big events there as well. We like have uh, concerts there with... 15,000 people there coming to What's it have called? a good time. It's called Siramay Wines, which is my dad's initials spelled backwards. His name's Terry Edward Morris, and if you spell T.E. Morris backwards, it's Siramay. Is so that's, the, that's how we come up. Is the motto now the only wine that Dale Earnhardt Jr. will drink? Mm. <laughs> it is. Yeah, he looks the Pinot Gris, the white Pinot Gris. Yes, so, it's the uh, best. That's, he's drunk. <laughs> it's all it's all it's really the only wine i will ever drink and i just um i, I have tried other pinot gris uh because of his um you know I'll, I'll i'll try it here in the states of some other brands but when he so you're thinking australia right if you go to australia you're thinking um kangaroos right you're thinking about <laughs> yeah, kang- you're thinking about it, the first thing that comes to my mind is kangaroos well yes. the outback koalas. things yeah. like yeah koalas all this <laughs> so we're flying in on this helicopter and we haven't really seen any of that. We've been in the city and mm-hmm. in the suburbs for the most part of our trip. And when we flew into that winery, man, it was the most beautiful uh, scene. There's kangaroos hopping all over the place as we're ha- we're hovering over down on the ground. I mean, they're they're right there and uh, just a beautiful place. We had a great lunch. Place was packed full of cheery people. Everybody was happy and uh, having a great time. All the tables were kind of intermingling and laughing amongst each other and with each other. Just to, I, I just remember that as probably the, one of my funnest parts of the trip was that lunch we had. So, so that that time when you were here testing out that car, right? so you talked about how they shipped the car. Yeah. 
Um, which I remember we kind of just thought, man, that's kind of crazy. I don't know that we've ever had a car shipped from Australia right over straight to Dirty Mo Acres. But, no. But, but and it hadn't happened since, nope. I don't believe. Uh, but then you – and did Owen – Kelly come with him, or was Owen already here? Owen like, how came, did that all set up? Owen uh, Kelly is a friend of Paul's. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, Owen came with me on that trip. He, that's, that's when he stayed and then started driving your late model. Yeah, so Owen comes. Uh, Owen's just a friend of Paul's, and Paul's like, um, this is my friend Owen. He's a, a aspiring race car driver, and he's really good. You ought to give him a shot. And we got drunk enough to one night that I agreed to let Owen race one of our late models for an entire season. And so Owen ends up staying in in North in North Carolina at one of our apartments, yeah. uh, one of our rentals, and raced a late model for a year. That's what Paul Paul comes over to hang out for a couple of weeks to 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 drink and party, and then left one of his friends here for a year. <laughs> yeah. This is this is the real testimony to that wine is that it landed Owen Kelly a job. Owen, <laughs> well, it landed him a, jo- a job. He, for, for, he raced here for a year. Ended up marrying his wife, meeting his wife here, didn't he, Paul? And now he he's, did. She's from Georgia. Now they have they have two kids. Um, both he, live in Melbourne. So yeah, if we hadn't have drunk that wine. Owen probably be still single. <laughs> <laughs> So why did they end up – I remember very specifically hanging out with Paul and Owen in Daytona. Yeah. Would, how did that happen? Do you remember this, Paul? <laughs> we go – we go to the test. The test, right? Oh, and the, this the is how not he test sessions. Dale says to us, we're going to leave at 6 o'clock in the uh, – 8 o'clock in the morning. We're going to pick up. We're going to fly down to Daytona for the, for the test. And we're like, okay, we're going to go down to Daytona for the test. So 8 o'clock in the morning, we're out the front of the, the guest house, ready to pick up, and I think you might have grabbed us, Mike. Maybe. And then he said, oh, we're right to go. I said, where's Dale? He said, oh, he flew down two, two hours earlier. He wanted to go early. And we're like, man, these guys are using jets like their, their pickup trucks. This is, I've never <laughs> seen it. I said, well, this thing's – he said, oh, this thing will be going up and down all, all day, bringing stuff back and forth. I've got to go back now and pick up a gearbox. And we were like, oh, we just couldn't believe it. It was like – must have looked like the Beverly Hillbillies. It was just couldn't believe what was happening. <laughs> Says the guy that lands helicopters on things and tell, yeah, like this yeah, – this, this, yeah, uh, yeah, this is so odd, flying a jet to Daytona. But, Whatever you get used to, isn't it? The yeah. Are, that's, that's a beautiful thing in a different country and seeing different things, it's, it's, it's cool. What do you remember of the Daytona test, like being down there? What do you remember? Uh, I remember on the lollipops. I remember <laughs> we, had a big, we, had a couple, we had a big night. And uh, the funniest thing I remember, we were in um, the Hooters. That was across the across – the, um, so we went to get some lunch. Some some guys there, and we were set down there having lunch and got talking to them. And then we went back to the garage area, and we were in the garage with Dale after there. And the guy goes, "Weren't you, weren't you just uh, in Hooters having lunch with Hooters?" I said, "Yeah." He goes, "What are you doing in his garage?" He couldn't believe that we were actually in his garage area in the test. So, and then um, what else did we do there? We had a pretty good time. We had ticket to do whatever we want around the whole place. And then uh, we met up with Boris Said that weekend as well. So I knew of Boris. Oh, yeah, and Boris Said. Any before, Dale introduced me to Boris, and now Boris and I are really close friends. So our, our two sons are similar age, and, and even they're really good friends. So to me, the whole thing about motor racing is just it's incredible network of people, and, and uh, you can be racing anywhere in the world, any car, any type of racing, and you're two steps away, but by having really, really good connections, incredible thing to be involved in. Yeah, your friendship with Boris uh, is is pretty special, and Boris has actually come over to race at uh, Mount Panorama, which uh, isn't that right? He come over. You, yeah. you you set all that up. You did. Wait, we, I'm, a, I'm talking to Boris, and you go, you should put him in your car for Bathurst, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, I think. I'll- <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I've noticed something. There's a common denominator. It doesn't take a whole lot of convincing when it comes to Paul and, and, and you Me guys. Me and Paul together are, make some awesome plans. Y'all just make some freaking decisions, yep. man. It don't take long. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Boris come out and raced with us for Bathurst. He come out and did some racing at the Gold Coast uh, 600, the, the supercar race on the Gold Coast. Then I ended up doing Daytona 24 hour with Boris a couple of times. So, yeah, that- pretty, pretty amazing. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. There was a real. That, Paul came pretty close one time to driving our Xfinity car. You remember what? me and you BSing about doing that, Paul? Yeah, you wanted me to drive it on an oval, and I'm like, oh, just give me a road course. I mate. thought that was road. I thought it was the other way around. I wanted you to run the road course, and you're like, no, I want to run an oval. No, it was definitely the other. No, no, you were like. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of wind. <laughs> so how close did this get? I, I just mean, just that? I mean, like, I was, you, I was, you wouldn't have put him on a road. I mean, we put anybody on a road course. We were in between drivers, and, and I was like, man, if it's going to happen, this is the time it needs to happen. Think going 